Let's look at a case uh, example. There's a 59-year-old man who came to see us, and uh, he wanted to undergo a wellness program. He was having some fatigue, some eye pain, and some headaches, uh, not very much, no chest pain, or shortness of breath, or any uh, cardiac symptoms. Uh, on physical exam, his blood pressure 136 over 81. He had a very high total cholesterol, 317, LDL cholesterol 227, HDL cholesterol 70, triglycerides 286. But that what really wasn't brought, what, that wasn't what brought him to us. Uh, it was the fact that he had recently been diagnosed as a diabetic. He had a hemoglobin A1C of 6.3 and uh, his CRP was 1.4. So his doctor said, well, you're an early diabetic, pre-diabetic. By the time you're over six, in my book, I think you're a diabetic. But the point is, he was labeled as a diabetic. And so his doctor wanted to start him on medication. He didn't want to start medication, so he came to see us. So diagnosed type 2 diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension. Uh, his dietary history, he ate lots of fruits and vegetables, a little bit of fish and chicken, little eggs, some skim milk. He exercised two or three times a week. So you look at that on the surface, lots of people say, that's not too bad. You know, what more can I do? Medication, he only took Excedrin for us, some weird eye pain that he had. He had undergone a detailed uh, ophthalmology workup, and uh, the eye pain, uh, there was no diagnosis found. So we started him on a detox program. And I'm going to go through this real quickly. These are the options, medical therapy alone, medical therapy and complex lifestyle change, or food prescription alone. I give you a little quiz option. We chose C. Okay, we put him on a food prescription alone, large because that's what he came for. Uh, we started on a detox from 0 to 4B for the first four weeks. Not a bite, drop, or crumb or anything outside of 0 to 4B. Uh, we left him on his medications. And this is a diagram, uh, a, a slide of a diagram showing what we show. So level 0 is here. This is a detox phase. But you shouldn't go past level 6. And this shows all the different uh, descriptions of what can constitute 0 to 6. I'll spare you of that. This is the zone from level 0 to 3. And sometimes four is a detox zone. The slow healing and maintenance zone is the level six. And disease development progression zone, and as I like to say, the uh, Montgomery Kids College Fund contribution zone is level seven to 10. Uh, and so you want to try to avoid level seven to 10. So we have these compliance cards. We start them on the detox zone. After about a week or two, we had increased energy. And the interesting thing, that eye pain that he had, that nobody could figure out what the cause was, it went away after about 10 days of the food prescription approach. And it recurred on the day that he sort of fell off. He went to level seven on one day, and pain recurred. He got back on the program and went, went away. So we were able to measure his compliance. So week one, he stayed zero to three, 100% of the time. Week two, zero to three, 100% of the time. But week four, he had one day where it went beyond seven. Okay? And so uh, he fell off, then got back on. And so we were able to accurately measure throughout the whole first four weeks at 17.9% of the time, he was at level zero, 78.6% of the time, zero to three, and then 3.5% of the time, over seven. So we can measure and quantify his compliance using this food classification system and it's given some accuracy. Systolic blood pressure dropped over time. Weight went over time. This is just in the first four weeks. Cholesterol, 30-day changes. His total cholesterol went from 317 to 189. LDL, 227 to 116. And uh, his uh, HDL dropped, but it didn't drop to the same extent that the LDL dropped. Uh, the drop in the HDL is not a problem. Usually it's because the body doesn't need as much uh, HDL. Triglycerides dropped from 286 to 84. C-reactive protein went from 1.4 to 0.5. Hemoglobin A1C went from 6.3 to 6.0. Now, hemoglobin A1C dropping in one month, uh, you might say, well, that's an average of three months blood sugar, but the drop in one month probably has to do with the decrease in swings in blood sugars. 30-day overall clinical changes. Notice how blood pressure and weight dropped around 10%, but if you look at some of the biochemical markers, the cholesterol dropped around the 30 to 40% range, and inflammatory processes dropped over 70%. So you're seeing these uh, minute biochemical changes changing at a much greater extent 
than the anthropomorphic uh, changes and some of the gross hemodynamic changes. Case two is a 65-year-old person with coronary disease, had prior, two prior MIs. And so this is somebody with extensive heart disease and had an ejection fracture of 35 to 40%, and they'd just been in the emergency room with chest pain, they ruled them out for MI, heart attack, and so they brought them to see us. And we measure a special uh, molecule called troponin. And troponin is, is, is an intracellular molecule, it's one of the um, components of the uh, contractile apparatus of the heart, and if the heart's under a lot of stress, it'll leak a lot of troponin. So we know a troponin level of 28 uh, picograms per ml, puts him at high risk. So we put him on the detox program, and then after a week, his troponin level went down to about 5, 7 to 14. So troponin level dropped significantly over a period of time uh, with the nutritional detox. So here's a graphical display of that. And so we see that the amount of stress on the heart is decreased not four or five years later, but within a matter of weeks just by implementing a nutritional detox uh, program. He was on glipizide, which we thought may have been contributing to some chest pain and some stress here, and we stopped it. His troponin level went down even more. So, <clears throat> hemodynamics. How do you assess somebody's cardiac function? How do I know how well your heart's working? I don't have to go and do an angiogram. I can look at different hemodynamic parameters. We can measure what's called ejection fraction on an echocardiogram. If it's less than 50%, it's a problem. It's supposed to be greater than 50% is normal. It's going the wrong way. The stroke volume, that's the amount of blood that the heart squeezes out with each contraction. We can measure that non-invasively. Uh, vascular resistance, you know, resistance of flow, cardiac output, that's the total body circulation. Uh, we can look at that. And we can also look at heart size. Bigger is not better from the standpoint of heart size. So if you look at these uh, different parameters, we can get some idea of cardiac performance. So here's a group of about uh, 15 individuals who has a history of hypertension, and we measured some of these cardiac parameters uh, non-invasively, uh, and uh, we followed them uh, in the nutritional detox program. What did we see? We saw that their cardiac output improved, their stroke volume improved, the vascular resistance decreased, the thoracic fluid content decreased, and the heart rate decreased as a result of the heart pumping more efficiently. The systolic and diastolic blood pressures uh, decreased significantly, as did their weight and waistline. And as we measured these things, we uh, found an interesting correlation. So we used a mixed model, had a, a statistician use a mixed model measures, and they looked at different trends, how these things, so it's not only one thing to say these things went down in a month. So how did they decrease? There's a linear trend, which is a straight decrease, a quadratic trend has one bend in the curve, and a cubic trend has two bends in the curve. So if you look at blood pressure and systolic and diastolic, they had a linear and a cubic trend. Weight and BMI had both a linear and a quadratic uh, decline. If you look at waist and uh, circumference, they had a linear and a quadratic uh, trend. So there was significant difference between how blood pressure decreased and weight decreased. What do I mean by that? If you look at blood pressure, you see after week one it drops and then it comes up and goes back down. And drops, this is diastolic, goes up, comes back down. That's a cubic trend. But if you look at weight, Okay, it's a quadratic trend. It's sort of down, down, and down, only one bend. If you put these superimposed, you see the weight going down, but blood pressure bumps up. Now, why am I making a big deal of this? I'm making a big deal of this because we often say, well, your blood pressure comes down because you lose weight. But this goes against that. The trend, the way in which your body loses weight and the blood pressure improves are different. And so, nutritional excellence, the biochemical effects that is affecting blood pressure is independent of weight loss. So you can have skinny people who may not be losing any significant weight, they can still have the same physical changes, biochemical or physiological changes with blood pressure reduction. So don't say that weight, blood pressure improvement is secondary to weight loss. It's not secondary to. They may happen similarly at the same time, but the, the mechanism is different and the trends uh, show this. Uh, here's some hemodynamic profiles. The cardiac output goes up, which is good. The stroke volume goes up. Again, the stroke volume is the amount of blood the heart pumps with each beat, so you want that to go up. The resistance to flow goes down, which is what you want. The fluid content improves and the like. 
So if you summarize all of these anthropomorphic and hemodynamic changes that you see in 30 days of plant-based nutrition, stroke volume improves, circulation improves, thoracic fluid content, your body's volume status improves, the resistance to flow goes down, the blood pressure, systolic and diastolic goes down, as does the weight. So you wonder why people are feeling better. They're feeling better because you have better flow. It's better flow throughout your circulation. Your brain's getting more flow, okay? And so you're improving. We had a series of, uh, a group of three patients, we had, a card had the benefit to do a cardiac MRI before and after uh, um, a nutritional detox. And so the question is, can it, has a, can it have an effect on the structure of the heart? So a cardiac MRI is probably one of the best tests to look at the structure and anatomy. So I can see how thick the heart chambers are. I can look at it and see how well the heart's pumping. <clears throat> and so a cardiac MRI gives a lot of detailed information. So these individuals had heart failure uh, for more than a year. The ejection fraction was 22% or less for more than a year, on average 22%. And uh, most of them do, had it due to ischemic heart failure. So we put them on food levels 0 to 4A for about six weeks. And uh, we did cardiac MRIs before and after. The average follow-up time for the three subjects was 78 days. And what do we see? Similar to what we saw with our non-invasive hemodynamic monitoring, increased ejection fraction, improved cardiac output, increased stroke volume. But one thing we can see on MRI that we couldn't see on the other tests is we saw a decreased mass. The heart was getting smaller. The heart that was hypertrophied regressed. Uh, in diastolic volume decreased, in systolic volume decreased. We were able to measure those things on MRI. So although there's more work needed, these results are very promising. Uh, someone with an enlarged heart can shrink their heart. Now notice, individuals who have an ejection fraction of 22%, they get a defibrillator, they get put on a transplant list, there's a lot of therapy goes into that. So if we can reverse that, went from an average of 22% to 42%, just on plant-based food alone, then they don't have to walk to those heart transplant centers. They can avoid defibrillator implants. You know, on the transplant, if you get on the transplant list, you have an LVAD, you live in the hospital for about six months or, or longer sometimes waiting on a heart transplant. So you can aggressively change these things in a very short period of time. So the cardiac MRI changes, LV function improves, stroke volume, cardiac output improved, uh, LV mass, the heart's got smaller and more efficient and stronger. Here's one of the individuals who is a 46-year-old lady who came and saw us, and she was part of that group. And uh, I did an angiogram on her, and we saw a 90% osteal LED lesion, left anterior descending coronary artery. And uh, she was a walking time bomb, and she elected not to undergo surgery. Uh, she went through our food prescription program, uh, and as before, we assessed her clinical condition, optimized the medical therapy, uh, she started on food level 0 to 3, really 4B. We optimized the medications uh, with those medications. She got, went through the ECP, external counterpulsation therapy, to uh, control her symptoms early on along with the food. But here's a list of, the, the, of what we give our patients. And we've mo notice we focus on food to avoid. And this is the big emphasis. I don't say eat this much broccoli, this much green. We do say that. But the hardest thing to get across to patients is not eating this. And it's not a bite, not a drop, not a crumb. And so she followed that. And after five and a half months, the snow went from there and it opened up. LV function went from 24% to 50%. So she avoided a fibrillator implant, avoided a massive heart attack, avoided possible need for transplant, et cetera. So uh, we do look at biomarkers as well. They help us as surrogates uh, uh, of uh, improvement, especially early on. Uh, and here's a, a, a picture of the biomarker analysis uh, of, um, and notice, and this is an uh, average of 200 subjects that went through a, one of our programs, uh, our boot camp program. This is our boot camp data, it's an average of 200 subjects. We've had over 1,000 people over the eight years who've gone through our boot camp uh, who've, who've had similar results. But notice the weight, blood pressure around 5%, cholesterol around 10%, inflammation around 30 percent. So the point is that even though we look at weight loss and we make a lot out of weight loss, the real magic is happening at the cellular level. And you're seeing more drastic changes, and these changes are really what's leading the other changes. And it's probably about a six-fold difference. 